It has been about 24 hours since the Nolan Arenado trade happened. So in today's video, I'm going to do the winners and losers of the Nolan Arenado trade in my opinion. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. But before we get into this video, 68% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Leave a like. There's no reason not to hit that subscribe button. There's a most daily MLB content on this channel. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications and leave a like. And let's go ahead and get into this video. Now in this video, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's going to be a lot more losers than winners in this trade. So, our first loser is the Miami Marlins here, and here's how the Marlins are losers here. I think that Nolan, they definitely have the pieces to trade for Nolan Aronite. I understand Brian Anderson, but he could be moved to the outfield here, and this is, they, they definitely could have traded for a Nolan Arenado type player. He would be the face of their franchise, which is kind of what the Marlins are looking for. We're being honest, they don't have a franchise cornerstone type player. You can now move Brian Anderson to right field, which right field's a big need considering Brian um, Lewis Brinson's there, and he's pretty bad, if we're being honest. And Nolan Arenado makes them a ton better team. And I think they should have tried to pursue Nolan Arenado a little more, as I think other teams should have done that. But they didn't. And I think he could have been great for this team. I think it's going to be great for any team but he didn't end up going to them. Next team is the LA Dodgers here, and they're winners and losers here. They're winners because you don't have to face Nolan Arenado in the division, which is a W, but they're also losers because they were one of the teams that were rumored to get Nolan Arenado. Now, the Dodgers, they already have a very good team. It's, it's just like them possibly getting Trevor Bauer. They have a very good team either way you slice it, so there's not... They didn't have to have... Nolan Arenado. It wasn't like it was a huge loss that they didn't get Nolan Arenado because they already have players like Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager. They already have a ton of players that are very, very good. Even Max Muncy, Will Smith, um, Gavin Lux. They have a lot of good players. Um, this team is a winner and loser here. But you could say that they're going to re-sign Justin Turner, so there was no point. But they that's not officially been announced yet. So, if you're thinking that they're going to re-sign Justin Turner, which I do think they will, then that makes sense why they probably wouldn't pursue Nolan Arenado. Next is the Rangers, and they're kind of similar to the Marlins here, where they need a franchise cornerstone-type player. And they had the prospects to give up, similar to the Cardinals, who ended up swinging the trade for Nolan Arenado. They had a top third baseman at their farm system in Josh Junk, who would be very good. I understand Josh Junk's the future third baseman there. But if nothing else, Nolan Arenado is a great mentor for Josh Young, a player that was in single A just in 2019 and is not going to be up for probably a year or two as of right now. And since he's not going to be up for a year or two, Nolan Arenado can be a great mentor. And Nolan Arenado has opt-outs in this deal too. He has two opt-outs, one in 2021 and one in 2022. So he could easily opt out and it would make sense for him to opt out if he was with the Texas Rangers. Next is losers in El Central besides the Cardinals. The NL Central here, they are all losers because they have to face Nolan Arenado every game that he, they play in the NL Central, and that's an L. There is no other way that you can say it. Facing Nolan Arenado is a pain in the butt, just like it was for the NL West, and it, it will be a problem for these other teams, and it will be a nightmare that they will have to face. Next is the New York Mets. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to make the case for all four or – four of these next teams, yeah. But they could have traded for Nolan Arenado. They had they have a lot of third basemen in their farm system, including players like Brett Beatty, Mark Vientos. So they could have definitely used a Nolan Arenado. Now, I do think they're the favorites to get Chris Bryant, so maybe that's the deal there. And they didn't want to – I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have – I, I can understand some part of it. And the some part of it is the fact that you're going to have to pay Lindor along with this contract of Arenado, which is not a bad contract at all. It's just you're going to have to be paying a lot, a lot of money. So I could understand where you're going there. Um, but he could easily opt out after one year. And I don't think he would being in New York, but he could have, and it could have happened. 
Next is the Philadelphia Phillies. They're a loser because, I mean, they were one of the teams that were rumored to trade for them too. Alex Vaughn, another top prospect at their at the top of their farm system and at the third base position. And they could have got better value from other teams here, I feel like. But the Rockies did not end up doing that. And the Phillies are a loser here. Not too bad of a loser, but it just makes them another team that just falls down in probably those rankings of the NL right now where you look at teams like the Dodgers, Padres, Braves, Mets, Nationals, being up at the top there along with the Cardinals. They're just another team that probably does not make the playoffs, if we're being honest, because, yeah. Next is the Washington Nationals, and the Nationals have been rumored all offseason to be trying to get a third baseman, and they're another team, like I've said multiple times, that has a third baseman at the top of their farm system in Carter Keeban. Nolan Arenado would have been a great fit on this team if they didn't have to give up Carter Keeban, a great mentor for Carter Keeban. And would he have opted out in Washington? I don't know. It would it depend a lot on how the first year went there. So he could have opted out. And I think any of these places, most likely, except maybe the Rangers and the Marlins, he would have probably waived his no trade clause. I mean, he probably would have done most anything just to get the heck out of Colorado, which is very understandable because they were never going to win a World Series, which is partly their own fault and which is partly they're not because they're in the NL West, which is a very tough division. So that's problem number one there. And problem number two is the fact that they play where there's higher altitude. And that that's a problem because pitching pitchers do not do well there. And you're not going to really attract big free agents to Colorado. It's a lower market. And, yeah. So, next we've got another loser, and it's my favorite team, the Atlanta Braves. This is pretty self-explanatory why they're a loser here. I know a lot of people are believing in the Austin Riley hype. I'm not that person because I just don't think that he's going to be that great of a player. I think that he's a player that will go for stints that where he's a very good player, where he does hit home runs and where he is very, very good and a player that shows a lot of potential. But I don't think that he's your third baseman for the future. And for what they gave up for Nolan Arenado, Austin, Austin Riley would have had a great mentor there in Nolan Arenado. And I don't think they would have had to give up Austin Riley. They have a lot of young pitching, too which is major league ready too, which you figure is a lot of what the Rockies were looking for back here in a trade. And the Braves had everything that they would have wanted back here in a trade, even like a Shea Langleyers or Will, William Contreras back in a catcher. So they had a lot of options here. I don't see why a trade didn't get done. I mean, there were no big prospects involved, and I just can't wrap my head around why the Braves or Mets or others weren't willing to swing a trade for Arenado. Like, there had to be something I'm missing. I'm not an MLB insider, but there had to be something I'm missing here. That Why? Like, they could have gave up better players, in my opinion. Next, we move on to the winners after a bunch of losers. The first winner here is the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, you – oh, the Rockies are losers. Durr. Um, I, I just totally forgot the Rockies on my list. I'm very sorry about that. But the Rockies are losers. This does not have to be explained much. You traded one of the best players ever to play in Colorado, which you can argue Todd Helton, too. Um, Todd Helton or Nolan Arenado is probably the best player in franchise history to play in Colorado. And they traded for pennies on the dollar. This was more of a move where I think that they were believing too much in their farm system here. And the only reason I think they – they take this trade is because they're feel, feeling like it's close to spring training. You know, we, we just need to get him out of here. He doesn't want to be here. You know, it's just time to get him out. And I think that's really their mindset here. And they've got some third basements in their farm system, like a Ryan Vidal who could be up as soon as this year. Um, you've got Colton Walker, um, Welker who could be up as soon as this year. You've got Aaron Schunk who won't be up till 2022, according to the ETA. And you've even got other players like maybe a Tyler Nevin type player. So they do have some third basements in their farm system, and that's the only reason why I think that they would have accepted this trade. But it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. They traded him for pennies on the dock. They traded him too quick. I think they just looked at the first trade and was like, yep, trade him, trade him, trade him. So, yeah. But the winners here are St. Louis Cardinals, obviously. I made a whole reaction video, so go check that out. 
But the Cardinals are obviously winners here. There is no and if or buts about that. And the next winner is the NL West. And it's the Dodgers are a winner and loser. But all the other teams are winners because they don't have to face Nolan Arenado. And that makes it easier for teams like the Diamondbacks, the Giants. Because the Rockies look to be rebuilding and they could be the fifth place team. And that maybe moves them up a spot in the division. So, yeah, those are the winners and losers of the Nolan Arenado trade. If you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, because there's no reason to not subscribe. Nearly daily baseball content on the channel, so subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a like. 68% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, so get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like. Thank you for watching, and peace.